Hey guys, welcome to Data Products. Today we're going to be doing ggplot histograms. We're going to show distributions of data, uh, interesting uh, way of displaying data. Well, I shouldn't say, you're probably familiar with them, so they're not super interesting. Um, but a good way to show the distribution uh, of your data, um, specifically count data, uh, a good way to show count data. Um, so let's get right into it. Okay, so let's open up R. Let's open up a new R Markdown file, HTML. We're going to call this one histograms. Get rid of all this jazz. Okay, so first thing, um, we're going to be creating a uh, use random numbers. We're going to use random weight numbers. Um, and so setting your seed, what that does is that it makes the random numbers reproducible, if that makes sense. So what happens is R is going to look, generate random numbers, and they're always going to be the same random numbers, right? Um, so if you don't have to do the same as me, um, you can do the same as me if you want. Um, or you could just not set a seed, and then every time you ran this code, it would generate a different distribution. Um, that is up to you. So, uh, factor. So, uh, W data is going to be our weight data. It's going to be a data frame where sex equals a factor, where we uh, do a rep of um, female and male. Um, and each one we're going to do 200 times. And then the weight is going to be an R norm. Uh, so it's a random number from a normal distribution. That's what R normal does. And we're going to take 200 measurements and we're going to say for females, the average is 50. And R norm uh, for males, we're going to do 200. And the average will be 58. Um, and then we'll do head of our W data and we'll show the first four. Okay, so you see we have females, we have their weights from that normal distribution, um, and that's it. Um, and so now um, we're going to load dplyr because we're going to have to get a summary statistic from this. Um, for our histogram. Uh, let's see. So, dplyr, and we're going to create our meme, which we'll call mu, and we're going to say from wdata, we're going to pipe down, um, and we're going to group by sex. Um, and then we are going to summarize. Uh, by the group mean, and that's going to be the mean of weight for each group. Uh, so, so we have mu now, so we have two observations. We have the female average and the male average, perfect. Um, so now let's load the audio package. We're going to Good old ggplot2. Um, and then we're going to set our theme. You can play around with this if you want. Um, I'm just going to stick with classic. Um, I'm going to set my legend to the bottom. Why not? I don't remember if we even use a legend in this one, but we will see. Um, okay. Now let's create a ggplot object. So we want to take our, uh, let's call this A, and put our data, data frame, into a ggplot object for plotting purposes. Uh, and our aesthetic, our x is gonna be the weight. We don't need a y, because it is, um, 
going to do count for us. Um, let's we'll just put it in this chunk. So let's create our histogram. Genome histogram. So the bins is how many different individual bars or how uh, much you break apart your data. Um, so you can play around with that number. I'm going to do 30. Our color is going to be black. Um, our fill will do gray. Um, and then our genome uh, V-line going to do x intercept equals the mean of weight and then our line type uh, is going to be dashed and the size of our line is going to be 0 0.6 all right let's see what we get okay so um, as you can see here we have our, this line is the average of everything, right? So it's perfectly in between the two. Um, it's not breaking them into male and female. This is, this is the mean, right? And since that makes sense, right? So the average should be 58, which we had for males, and the average should be 50 for females, but they're random, so it's a little bit off. Um, and then the average would be in between the two. Um, so let's, uh, now let's change the color by group. So let's do genome histogram aesthetic color equals sex, fill equals white, position equals identity. And then scale color manual values equals. Um, let me use hex code. What did I write? Zero zero a f b b for the females, and then b seven b eight hundred. Gotta put parentheses around this. Okay, let's see what we get here. Okay, so we have our teal and our mustard, our tried and true mustard yellow. Um, so you can see we broke it apart where uh, males and females are more easily identifiably separated. Um, okay, now let's do All right, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna copy this and paste it here. Um, but we're going to add a, um, or fill to it, right? Um, so we're going to say um, values equals C, and you can change, usually I just use the same fill and the outline, but let's try it. Let's do this. Let's do uh, Indian red, which was something we used a lot, and light blue one. Let's see how this looks. Probably bad, but hey. Um, oh, it's not going to let me do that. Let's see. Scale fill manual. Huh. That's a quirk I didn't know. GG plot had. Let's see what happens. Let's do this. Oh, did I miss? It? Let's see. Um, sex fill equal. Oh, because I have fill equals white here. And this has got to be taken out. All right, now let's try. It. Okay. <laughs> uh. Let's see. Why are my things all gray? This is what happens when you try to ad lib uh, as you are recording a video. 
All right, let's see. A plus genome histogram aesthetic color equals sex fill. I've got fill equals sex up here. Now let's try it. All right. So we have that. Let's change these now. Indian red and light blue one. Uh, oh, we gotta get rid of that because it's not a hex thing. No, oh, okay. <laughs> so we're making some funky color combinations here, but as you can see, the outline uh, and the fill doesn't have to be the same color, so you can get wacky with it if you want to. Um, you know, your goal is not to be wacky, it's to convey data in a very professional, meaningful manner. But we're playing around here for this, right? Um, okay. Although, if you were doing this on Praxis and you were compiling a portfolio, you might not want to be too crazy and make ugly graphs because if you're going to show it to somebody that you're trying to impress, um, you probably want them to look as professional as possible, not like mine. Uh, so, yes. Okay. Um, so, um, what if we want to combine density plots and histograms? Let's play with this idea. So A plus genome histogram aesthetic Y equals the stat density. Uh, and our color is going to be black and our fill is going to be white. Uh, and then we're going to add a density plot to it. Um, and our fill is going to be uh, FF6666. Okay, so now we have our uh, two distributions and we have a density plot uh, kind of overlaying it. Um, usefulness of this, I'm not sure, um, but it's showing you all the different options of things that you can do with ggplot. Um, and then lastly, um, let's do geom histogram y equals stat density color equals sex. So we're going to do our same density plot, um, but we're going to do a separate one for um, males and females. And then last, uh, wait, no, uh, genome density color by sex. Say size equals one, and then scale color manual. Uh, Indian red, light blue one. Why not? Okay. And position. So now we have uh, males and females, um, and we have the density plot over top of them. Um, so let's, if I would go all the way to the back to the beginning, and I'm going to change this to 56 and 58, and then run this last. Uh, I have to run it after I get the GG plot. Okay, as you can see. Um, I picked numbers that were closer together, so our distributions overlap, right? Um, and so some of these coloration things become more uh, valuable if our if our distributions overlap. Um, so like this, right? Uh, so you can see the distribution of each two overlapping histograms. I should have thought of that when I picked the random numbers at the beginning, um, but you can see. Density plots, um, the overlap of the density plot makes more sense when you have histograms that are overlapping and not so far apart like I had before. Um, 
So there is some utility uh, to having density plots on top of histograms if you're trying to, you know, uh, put a lot of data onto one figure like that. Um, so that's it. That's histograms, ggplot uh, with density plots layer, uh, layered on top. Uh, if you watch us on YouTube, please hit subscribe. Um, let's you know get these videos out there for people to learn. R is not scary. People get intimidated by it, but you could learn all this, um, you know, through these videos and finding, you know, practicing, play with your own data. Um, you know, it's it's a useful tool to have, and data visualization is very important. We've learned uh, throughout this uh, recent pandemic that conveying uh, information to the public is really important. And so, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, please. Uh, stick around, check out the next videos. We're going to be doing a lot more visualization and preliminary data analysis. Uh, and with that, uh, I'll catch you in the next one.